Hi guys, we're back with the ASH-26. This will be the part two on the ailerons. Got our radio set up, plugged in, and we're just in the process of double-sided taping these servos into their respective pockets in hopes of getting them mounted for permanent. And uh, where we left off, we had just applied this tape, so we're just rubbing it in and getting ready to move on. Okay, so we're going to peel this back. Okay, so now, you remember how we were concerned about exact placement here because the thickness of the wing makes a difference. You can see that we may not have tons of room there, so we got to be careful where we put this. And I really want that thing centrally located because if we're using these as flap rounds, we need to throw up and throw down. Which if you were just using them as ailerons, you would predominantly want to throw out because you're going to be pushing the ailerons up. And if you use differential, you're not going to hardly ever bring them down at all. So I'm just going to do this real, real, real loose. Real loose. Meaning I'll be able to first of all check the sweep to make sure it doesn't touch. And then secondly, I can throw it in the cavity and make sure it fits. Okay, so aileron, there's full one way, full the other, there's full the other, there's full one way. So the other thing you could do is you can open up those pockets if you wanted to encourage a little bit more opportunity for movement. I need to move in just a hair. Okay, so let's try that now. Clear ish <laughs> I can't honestly say that we're gonna get a whole lot better so I'm just gonna try this now make sure it fits in the pocket which there is one issue here and the issue being is that while I do have a good point to receive the screws here I'm not quite far enough up now I think our only recourse is going to be to trim off this edge now, we're not going to trim it completely off because we want somewhere to glue against. But what we're going to do is we're going to take these side cutters and we're going to chop that edge down. So you see this here? So we're just going to bite there. We're just going to take that off. And then that little piece is gone. So we'll take just a little bit more to make it square. And that should allow us to take our knife and then make a flat, clean cut here. I didn't realize that thing was hollow, but I guess it's hollow. Which is weird. Sometimes the stuff that these Chinese manufacturers do is really weird. Okay, so now we can fit that way up there to where we can get a good bite and we're covering up the whole hole. Okay? on both sides okay cool so now the second thing I I don't have yet is my marker uh, for marking the holes and then also we need our small drill bits so we can drill pilot holes goodness gracious what do I not need so this is what we're gonna use to mark what we're gonna drill with this Okay, so I want to just kind of center that so that it's really truly centered. Mark a hole. Mark a hole. Mark a hole. And mark a hole. Now ideally I'll just drill the first hole and then I'll just do it all live and in person. So, take just a second to do. And we don't even need to move that out of the way, so the markings are going to be kind of a moot point. So we'll just get this small drill bit here. And then we'll just size it up with the shaft of the... So you guys can see that... I'm going to go into the light. You can see that's going to allow that balsa wood to crush a little bit around it. But you know what? I'm okay with that. I think it's going to be fine. We're going to do that. Yeah. 
and that's too small for the chuck. Okay, that's annoying. If you run in a situation like this, take a piece of tape, okay, take it on the end of your drill bit, spin the drill bit in your fingers, like so. Take your drill, open the chuck, stick it in the chuck, drill your holes. That's annoying. You shouldn't have to do that. Okay, now you can see here and look where the holes are going to end up. And you realize that you're going to be right on the corners of everything, so you want to be careful not to make this any bigger than it's got to be, the holes, that is. Good, I feel like I'm into solid wood there. That's perfect, guys. Now, something I wouldn't necessarily normal do, normally do, I'm going to go ahead and take two of these screws, and I'm going to hold in and another screwdriver, guys. I'm trying to think if this is the one we had to use. Yeah, I think that's it. So we're going to use this one. It's going to work pretty good. And just to balance that and juxtapose it to what we've got that came in the kit. When I say the kit, I mean the stuff that I got from Ian when I bought this used. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start that. Now, I tried to favor all the way to the outside most portion so that there's no possibility of having an issue there. Now, you notice I didn't tighten those all the way because we still got to put hot glue on that servo to get that sucker held in there. But for now, I'm just kind of validating my positioning, see if my marks are still satisfactory. And uh, so far, so good, guys. Okay, very good. And at this point, I need to drill two more holes now that we feel like we've got the position where we want it. I got one more screw I got to get over here. Now that's very thin wood up there. Luckily, I got four screws holding it, but I mean, to be perfectly honest it makes me nervous because it's just not very much material to bite into so it's even more important to pre-drill a hole when you've got limited material which sounds so counterintuitive because here's the thing if you don't pre-drill a hole then you're going to displace the material which means you're very likely just going to split it and then you're screwed pun intended ha 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 Okay, here we go. So now once we get these tight, then when I pull these out and I put them back in, I'm going to have some CA in there to line the holes to make them a little bit more sturdy. Boy, that looks nice, guys. That looks real sharp. Okay, cool. Okay, so we got that one in. So now, on this control surface, barring unforeseen circumstances, we're going to be using these or these. I mean, they look like they're the same, so I'll probably just, probably just end up using uh, whatever we can. Now, these ones, we can use the factory um, clevis adapters, whatever you want to call these things. You do want that joint to be right over the hinge point. So I'm curious if we can even get that much adjustment out of it. Let's see. Let's see if we can. Let's just spin them in. And those digital servers, they buzz all the time. It's annoying. These things might be a little bit too long. Pretty useless if they came with this model. <laughs> Since they haven't worked on anything yet. I'm just using that to hold it steady. It's not working well either. Guess I gotta get the right tool for the job, which is gonna be a pair of pliers. 
something like this. I'll hang on there and I can spin this in. So now we're going to need to drill a couple new holes. Okay, so we don't want that to go too much deeper because it's going to prevent us from moving our moving our arm. See, it's going to want to hold it steady like a brake. Need to have freedom of motion here. So a couple different thoughts. We can either trim that down. We can put a different style on or whatever. I don't know. I don't know the best maneuver, but to be perfectly honest, I have absolutely no problem with just using my own homemade little piece of rod. Um, that's going to be the lightest solution. I've had good luck in the past. I think I've had like one time I've had a rod break on me. Okay, hold on. i got to blow some junk out of here. So really, this thing's going to line up pretty much right there. So now I need to go get some rods so we can bend it. I think I want to use the same rod I used uh, for the elevator. That seemed to work well. I do actually have a little bit thicker rod too. I believe this is it. That's a lot thicker. That must not be what I was thinking of. I also have thinner rod than what I used. Pretty sure that's carbon fiber. Yeah, that's carbon fiber right there. That would be acceptable if I had an end to put on it. Which I don't. Okay, so we're going to use this. Precision Metals. Stock 497. 0 .3, 0 0.039 music wire, also known as 1 millimeter. Okay? Which should be plenty sufficient for what we're doing. Okay, so we're going to take... Uh, these bent pliers have been working good for this lately. Now what we need to do is we'll need to make a cut here fairly soon. But we're going to take and grab this. See how I use my pointer finger to guide it? Then I'm going to bend it. Okay. I'm going to take way out here on the tip, as far out as I can go. Now you can also use something like this, but you you realize how much longer this head is is going to make it have a propensity to want to twist on us. See? It's twisting. So now I'm going to take and do the same thing the other way. Okay, so that's like a Z-bend or an S-bend or whatever you want to call it. But you see there's play on this. It's not much, but it'll add up. And so what we'll have to do on this is we'll have to actually open up a hole that's going to be the right size to allow this to go in there. Okay? Or we'll have to open up a hole up here. I think we'll probably open a hole up in the middle. Okay, so we've already got a drill in here, and I think this drill, I think it's actually holding on to a piece of metal that's this size. It's darn close if it's not exact. So we're going to try that. Just slow, even pressure so you don't jab it into your finger. Once you start cutting, then you can reduce the pressure a little bit, let the blade do the work. See how we split the difference between here and here? Okay, very good. Now let's see if this thing fits in here and stays. Yep, it fits in there and stays. Okay, very good. So now, I already know that this is going to fit through here, 
with very limited amount of play. Okay, the play on there is less critical because it's a thicker piece. So let's get this measured out real quick. Now we want that wire to contact this control arm about halfway through there, but we don't want to obstruct its ability to close. So it's going to be a little bit off of what we normally do. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm just lining this up so it's totally square. Okay, or as square as we can get it within reason. Okay, there's a little bit of play there. That's not a huge issue. It's not ideal. The less play you've got on these, the more precise your controls are capable of being. Capable is the key word in that phrase. Just because you're capable of being precise does not mean that your controls are going to end up being precise. But if you're not capable of being precise, you're definitely not going to be precise. Okay, so remember we just pre-drilled some holes for these covers. Well, we're going to pre-drill these holes for this now. We just got to be thinking about the angle we want this to go, which is square. Now let's just hope we got it square, which we did. Beautiful. So now we can go ahead and get a couple more of those screws. Which as far as I'm concerned, these ones here I was planning on using anyway. But we'll just use these ones because they're not already into the material. And there's a backer, but my guess is our backer is going to give us the same issue we had last night when we were working on that other control surface, the elevator. And it's not going to want to reach. These screws are not going to be quite long enough to get all the way through. So we're going to do the same thing we did last night, which is to put the, the backer in there backwards. Which sounds funny, I know. Hypothetically, if you had a thick enough surface that you couldn't make it through, you could probably get away without using it all together. Whoops. I wouldn't plan on it, though. Okay, here we go. See, because if you have a thick enough material that you don't, you can't reach through, then there's a good chance you're going to have enough bite with your screws anyway. See, but same scenario as last night, I think. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and get this thing, we're going to get this linkage rod built. Um, there's not much material there to make adjustment on, but we are going to make an adjustment. There will be an adjustment. There always will be an adjustment. Okay, so I'm going to just hold it right here. I'm going to move this back so we don't spin. In fact, i got to put the cap on that. Where did I put the cap for my alcohol? There it is. I'm going to cap the alcohol off. I guess next thing you know, we'll be spilling that. Um, okay, so we're going to hold this flush. So that holds the wing surface flush. And we're just going to make sure, okay, so this is where we're going to end up bending. So we need to give ourselves a little bit of adjustment. We want this bend to go that way. Okay, now, it would be pretty easy to pull this thing out, so we're going to do that. We're just going to hold this where it's convenient. Okay, now we're going to take and we're going to bend in our adjustment. Now you could do this as a triangle, you could do this as a nice little loop. In our case we do need to keep it pretty, pretty small because of the nature of what we're working with, which is a very short linkage. Okay, so now I want to get these pliers in here to where I can really get a nice tight bend okay we want this thing to be totally true and square and right now it's not that we're gonna make it that way though now again just one other thing to keep in mind as you do this is that 
Your control surfaces are only as good as this linkage, right? Wrong. There's a lot of other factors that come into it, and that's why you want to give this the best chance at success, okay? Okay, so now, being that I got my hands otherwise full, I am going to very carefully mark this where I want my bend to be, okay? Okay, so you see how I marked it right next to the hole? So I want my bend to start at the black mark, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. So there's my black mark. So I'm going to come in here where I've got plenty of support for the wire. I'm going to start my bend. I want to make sure I'm nice and square. In fact, it'd be easier if I brought it all the way back to the end of the pliers here. Okay, I'm holding on tight. That thing will not slip and I'm going to go 90 degrees. Okay. I'm going to overbend it just, 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 just ever so slightly. And that gives me the chance to really get it square. And then I'm going to take, and I'm going to bite it at the thinnest part of these pliers. Now, if you take another pair of pliers, you can actually take and bite that and hold that in position. If you've got the right type of pliers, this, is, this would not be the right combo. But it's close. Okay, so remember, this is just going to give you a chance to get a nice tight fit into your servo control horn. Okay. So we've got that bent. Very simple. Okay, but we're not quite square. That's actually not such an issue there. That's just the tail. So now we need to cut this. So what we can do is we'll run back in here. We've got our cutting utensil. And uh, what we'll do is we'll cut it here with this first. You don't need a lot of extra slack. The more you got there's the more trouble you're gonna have. Okay, then we're gonna should have had these on earlier. We're gonna put on safety glasses, then we're gonna take this grinder and we're gonna clean up both ends. So that's for the next cut. That's for the one that we just did right there. Smooth it flush. Rotate it. And rotate it. Make sure it's not too hot. Okay, good enough. Good enough for now. I'll leave these down here. Alright guys. Now this could go hypothetically either way. I'm going to go into the right hole here. There's three of them. And then the one we made. Okay. So we're going to go in like that and then we're going to get this in the other side. So my expectation is probably a lot easier to get this into the servo first. Spin it. Okay. And then there's a couple of different ways you can do this. One, you can undo your servo cover, which we have to undo anyway so that we can get that glued on. Two, you can undo this, which I don't want to have to undo that because I'm biting into solid uh, wood. And the solid wood, meaning balsa wood, is not very strong. So you don't want to go in and out of that. As, as, as few times as you can do and still get the job done is what you want to do. Especially on these top two holes. But we've already established that we're going to have to take this apart so we can glue that back from the back side. So we might as well go ahead and do that all at once. And then we've got our adjustment, so we can adjust it once it's all taken care of. Okay? This is now going to allow us a chance to go ahead and hook on here at that spot right there. So we slip that in, we make our drop, and then I can hold that in position exactly where it's going to end up. And I can test the positioning just one last time. Oh, yes, guys. In fact, for testing reasons, I think it's worth putting a piece of tape on there. Oops. Oh, 
That's gorgeous, guys. I'm so excited. All this stuff, seeing it all come together. It's a good feeling. I prefer the feeling of unboxing it and flying it immediately. But this is this is also good too. But I'm not so married to every of the methods that I prefer that I can't let some Chinese guy get a job out of it. Because <laughs> he'll probably do a better job than me anyway. Okay. Alright, so we're going to pull this out. We're going to flip it upside down, guys. And we're going to do this just like we did the other one last night. Just going to glue this just a little bit. A little light, light them out. We don't want to get crazy. Okay. Then we're going to take... Oh, I better work quick. That stuff's going to be all cooled by the time I get back. Okay, good enough, good enough. I got what I needed out of it at least. Um, I just forgot to grab that Q-tip earlier. Grab 473 other things. Okay. 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 To be honest, it'd be nice if I could get some material up under there that would receive the screw better. I just don't think we're going to get it on this plane. Okay. And guys, this is just in case the 3M tape completely fails. And let's just be real. That 3M tape is probably quite a bit stronger than this hot glue. But together it's very strong. But not so strong that I can't get it out of there if I need to replace the servo, which is the whole key. That's the whole reason for doing it that way. Rather than using epoxy, epoxy, good luck getting that stuff off. You know, you'll probably have to rip the servo into pieces to get it off. And then you gotta figure out how to get the epoxy off. There are times and place for epoxy, don't get me wrong. And we're gonna be using them throughout this build. Okay, now that that material that material is not very thick you see and I can definitely get hot glue under there that hot glue would help to bridge that gap although what would work even better is if I could get a little bit of cotton and some CA in there and just CA that little joint back there and that you'd be amazed how much strength you get from that little thing so let's do it Let's do it if we can. This didn't work on the other surface because we couldn't make the angle. We can make the angle now. So we're just going to get like a couple, three drips of CA in there. Just let it soak down in there. Just let that work back. Spray it with kicker. I kind of pushed it back a little bit too, which is exactly what I was hoping would happen. We'll just go drip, 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 just kind of transfer that load, okay? Which is just exactly what we wanted to happen. So now that's going to take in. It's going to make a, a place to receive the screw into. But we don't want to go so overboard and, you know, put like a whole thing of cotton back there. We just want, we just want what we want. We don't want a bunch extra, okay? Same thing here. Now that time I pushed that back a little bit further so it'd get into where, where I think I want it. Feels like this thing is getting clogged up a little bit, so. Oh, there. I think I took off the tip there. There it is. Yep, it's coming out good now. Okay, so we'll just wipe that CA off quick. Get this kicker down in there. Just sprayed all my instructions with kicker. Whoops. Lick my thumb. Push it up in there. 
Okay, that's perfect, guys. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Just a little bit of backing, and that's the, and that's at the detriment of of I would say maybe if we're if we're lucky, we added one gram. But see, this back portion we already have a good sturdiness to it because it's going into more of a solid chunk of wood. Okay, so now we're just gonna put glue straight into the holes, just those four holes. I've always had good luck with that. Um, okay, so now what I need to do is I kind of need to encourage that glue to go down in those holes. It's kind of sitting on the top this time, which is a little bit annoying. So I'm just going to spin this knife. Whoop, that one's set up. Set up. Okay. Okay, so we got a little bit more material for everything to bite with now. Then we need to get our screw into the actual servo. That's not impossible, guys. We'll have to get back in here again. So, I mean, I don't mean to make it seem like, you know, we plan on never ever being in here again. That's totally possible, but, I mean, I hope we never have to get back in here. But that's probably an unreasonable expectation.